Hey, Bird Adventures. Welcome to another episode. I've been asked many times on how I flay my fish. There are many uh, ways to flay a fish, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm going to show you the type of knives to use. And we're going to be using this yellow bass that we just caught as an example. And I'm going to show you how I cut around the bones and everything. So yeah, follow along and uh, yeah, let's get started. And this is a yellow bass. This is one of the bigger ones that we caught. So I'm going to start with this one. But first, let's, let me show you my setup right here first. Okay, this is a very basic setup. I have my garbage to my left side. And then I have a couple of fish that are already filleted. I also have a bowl with water, with cold water. This is where I actually throw the fillets in. Usually if, if I'm only doing one or two fish, then yeah, I don't worry about the water. But I put some cold water in here to keep the fillets cold and also to keep them from drying out. And as far as the blade, this is a Rapella fillet knife. What is important about this blade is you want a blade that is flexible. This is very important. This way you can get it pretty close to the skin when you're filleting. So make sure it's a very flexible blade and it's gotta be very sharp. If it's not sharp, you can actually injure yourself or cut yourself. So make sure that you sharpen them often and make sure it's flexible. It doesn't have to be Rapella. There's many different brands out there. This is just the brand that I happen to have. So then I got my cutting board, which is which will give me a nice surface for me to fillet my fish on. And I like it a little raised. So this is raised about three quarters of an inch. This way I can actually get my blade down closer to the board. So I don't have to really bend the blade because when you with some of these blades when you bend it real hard it actually starts to curve so this will give you an easier cutting edge when you're filling the fish and you'll see that in a bit and also what i did is i also laid a a trash bag on the table so this will prevent me scratching up the table making it dirty and it's easy to clean up so but let's start off with this yellow bass you see that the scale is going this way. When you push back, you can feel the very friction. And also with these yellow bass, you have to make sure you watch out for the yellow plates. These are actually really sharp. They're as sharp as the fillet knife, so be real careful. So you want to take your knife. You want to take it so it's diagonal. So you're going underneath the scales and cut it right behind the gill plate. You're gonna break your first incision. Just like so, cut it all the way down until it stops. That means you're hitting the, the bone, so which is good. And now from this part, this is the backbone that goes right here, all the way back. And you gotta also remember that rib cage comes from here, from this point, and it goes all the way like this. All the way down to the anal. This is the anal right here. So the rib comes from the middle right here. Of this part. And it goes all the way down like this to the anal. So when I cut the back. I'm going to be hitting bones all the way through. And then you'll feel like a little dip. That's where the rib cage ends. And it starts to slope down. You come down like this way. And then you're going to finish it off all the way through the tail. So we made a first incision already. <clears throat> now for the back make sure you cut all the way down it stops you turn the blade and cut alongside the backbone you can make the first cut on, on above the, the back first once you get to right here you can stop but then now you're going to take your blade and we'll come back this way and I'll just run your blade all the way to the to the back to the rib cage. And you'll note that you hit the rib cage is when you go through, you it'll stop. And then right here, once I get to this point right here, I kind of start to feel that the blade's starting to go down. So I know that that's the end of the rib cage. It's gonna start going down. Once I get to there, I stop. I take my knife, push it all the way through to the anal, so it pops out of the anal. Just like that and try when I'm doing that I'm trying to keep my blade as close to the backbone as much as possible now it's gonna come out the anal from here I'm gonna slightly 
angle my blade as I'm cutting through all the way to the tail. And that's gonna keep my blade as close to the backbone as possible. Cut all the way through, just like that. And now, I'll take my blade again, just keep on running across the back and follow the rib cage all the way down to the anal, just like that. So you see, this is the backbone right here. These are the bones for the fins on top. And the rib cage starts to curve down once you get to about this point. And that's where you're cutting down. And now to go around the rib cage, a lot of people, they like to cut through the rib cage and then remove the bones later. For me, I don't like that because I think that that kind of ruins your knife. But if you have an electric knife, then, then it's fine. I like to cut around the rib cage. So I just take my knife and just run it alongside the rib cage, just like that. Some fish will have pin bones that runs alongside the top of the rib cage. And these have a little bit as well. Those are called the pin bones. I'm just gonna continue going all the way through, just trying to stay as close to the rib cage as I can. Once you get down to the billy, then I just cut it off, and now you got your one piece of fillet. There's all these little pin bones right here. We're going to remove that later. This is where I kind of like the taller board, so I can put it closer to the edge. Do my cut, and that way so I don't have to bend the blade as much. This will keep the blade much straighter. And then now, remember to keep your blade at about a 15 degree angle at the least. And just slowly slice through, slice through. And don't worry, you're not going to cut through the skin or anything. You're just going to run right across the skin. And this is what you have, the skin right here. And now you can toss the skin. And for the pin bones, if you really want to, you want to save some more meat, you can take a pliers or something small. You just pull out every single pin bone, but that's gonna take too long. So what I do is I, plus some of these have red, the red meat right here anyway, so I don't really want the red meat, especially in white bass and yellow bass, they do have the red meat. I'm just gonna fill where the pin bones are, and it's usually right, right on the lateral line. So I'm just gonna take the my knife, cut right above, and right underneath and it's gonna cut all the way to the end of the where the rib cage ends that's usually where they stop and as you just cut this little piece of meat out and as you can see it removed a little bit of that red meat depending on when you catch these fish sometimes they could taste muddy especially on the white bass the yellow bass not so much but on the white bass they do have a little muddier taste if you leave the red line on And right here, just like that, you have real nice boneless fillet. And if you run your fingers across where the pin bones are, you notice that you do not feel the bones anymore. So here we go. It goes one nice fillet. All right, let's throw this in the cold bath water. Now this one I'm going to go a little faster. You don't want to cut against the scales because this is going to dull your blade. These are real tough scales. So that's why you want to turn it at an angle. Cut in. So you're actually cutting in between the scales. Then I'll go alongside the back. To this point right here. Keep my blade against the backbone. Boom, all the way, all the way through. Come around alongside the backside until I hit the rib cage. It's a lot easier when it's not frozen. And now, just 
slide your blade through just like that toss the skin cut out the pin bones and you're good to go just like that real simple well anyways guys yeah hopefully you guys uh, learned something from uh for me filling the fish for you guys and now i'm just gonna go ahead and finish filling the rest of the fish and then uh yeah let's uh, cook some uh of these yellow bass up i'm gonna deep fry some and i'm also gonna air fry some of them just to see which tastes better and just to see how it comes out in the air fryer i've never air fried fish before and i think this is a great opportunity because i have so many yellow bass and their table fare is really good and they're i know how they taste when they're deep fried but now we're gonna see how they taste when they are air fried so yeah stay tuned we'll be back in a couple minutes all right guys i got everything all set up here goes my yellow bass all ready to cook i'm not actually gonna cook all of this this is actually a lot of fish so we're just gonna do probably six seven pieces each i'm gonna be using canola oil for frying the fish and we're going with a short lunch cajun style this is actually my favorite short lunch compared to the other ones all right once you crack an egg take a fork and just whisk it beat it all right now let's open the short lunch I'm just taking a spoon just to soften it up. It's very clumpy from sitting in my vehicle from the cold, so it's gonna take some, dip it in the egg wash, and it's gonna get real messy, so guys. Oh that one almost escaped. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out in the air fryer, but we're going to give it a try anyways. I like to keep my fillet separate because it is, it's kind of like a wet batter, so they, they'll stick, stick together. All right, let's go get these uh, ready for the air fryer and the and the oil pan. And for the rest of these, I'm just gonna save these for next time. Yeah, for frying fish or whatever, I like to usually line the bottom with foil. All right, now I got the fish. I'm just gonna lay it in there. Make sure they're not touching each other. Close it up. I'm just gonna press on, start start off with uh, 12 minutes all right got five minutes left let's take a look at it real quick all right it's looking pretty good nice nice and firm it's not brown yet let's close it back up and let it finish cooking all right I think my oil is hot enough oh yeah and this should only take a couple minutes and the yellow bass in the air fryer is almost done too. It should be beeping for about 30 seconds or so. And then we'll go check it out. There it goes. There goes my air fryer fish. You can smell all the Cajun spices. All right, let's take it over by the table. All right, let's look at the comparison. I like how they're deep fried. It turns out a lot browner. And then this one, still kind of white. But it is fully cooked but we're gonna go ahead and take give it a taste test all right guys i'm very excited to try this so i got my yellow bass pan fried with oil and then air fried it didn't turn out 
brown like the pan fried maybe there's a trick to make it browner i don't know maybe cook it a little longer but with the fish being so thin i didn't want to burn it so and i got of course my rice with water got some uh, pickled jalapenos and my tartar sauce and of course you can't forget about the tabasco sauce so first let's try it just plain i know what this tastes like i don't know what this tastes like so let's try the air fryer first it might be a little dry it feels a little dry but i think it was the first bite okay not bad you can kind of taste the dryness but it's still got good flavors from the short lunch mm. yeah, it's a little dry but yeah it's still good it's still got good it's still got real good flavor now let's try the pan fried Mmm, that's so much more moist. Got a little bit different to flavor. This one you can still taste the Cajun. It's a, this is actually a little bit more spicy, and I, I didn't do anything different to it. You can taste the spice more in the air fryer compared to the deep fried in oil. Okay, now let's try my favorite way. Here, let's take a piece. Let's throw some Tabasco sauce on it. Let's try it this way. Mmm. Oh, it's good. Now let's try this piece. Mmm. Yeah. So the air fry so far, it's a little dry, but you can actually taste the spice a lot better. The deep fried, it's a little bit more moist. It's got a real good flavor, but you don't have that strong cajun spice maybe the fryer the oil maybe washed it away or something i don't know all right guys now let's try my favorite way air fryer fish jalapenos and tabasco tabasco sauce the perfect bite mm. definitely good and of course gotta have my rice Mm. Approved. Even though it's a little dry, still good. If I were to have a choice to choose between air fry or oil pan fried, I think I'm still going to choose the oil pan fry. But if you're looking for a more healthier alternative, then definitely go with the air fryer. All right, now the pan fried, oil fried, fish, jalapeno, and Tabasco sauce. Another perfect bite. Mmm, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely this. Definitely the oil pan fried. Yeah, let's try dip it in the tartar sauce. Mmm. Air fried. Mm, not bad. Dipping it in the tartar sauce actually made it, it gives it a little moisture, so it's actually pretty good. But wow, yeah, you could taste the spice. Wow, really good. Right, anyway, guys, I hope you guys like this episode. Make sure you hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe. And I'm going to go finish this wonderful meal. And uh, I don't know what we're going to be doing next, what we're going to be fishing or whatever next. But make sure you follow your dreams, follow your passions, and make it happen, guys. See you on the next video. Catch you guys later. Oh, you guys still here? I'll catch you guys later, guys.
perfect bite. Mmm, things looking good. All right. <laughs>